You, probably all of you, uh, will recall that uh, last summer, in the summer of 2008, the ruling AKP party in Turkey, the Justice and Development Party, narrowly escaped being banned by the Constitution Court. Actually, by only one vote. They escaped from being banned because, as you might also remember, state prosecutors had alleged that the party was trying to Islamize the country and install a theocratic government. When they escaped this uh, ban, there was a sigh of relief, not just among the supporters of the AKP in Turkey itself, but also among many Western liberals, not least in Brussels. And not just because banning this party would have probably uh, put a stop, at least for now, on enlargement of the EU to Turkey, but also because for a long time observers in the West have regarded a party like the AKP as a prototype, if you like, of something that people have come to call Muslim democracy. Muslim democracy not in the sense of, broadly speaking, Muslim countries being democratic or having democratic government, but rather Muslim democracy in the sense of parties which draw at least some of their programmatic values from religious sources, but at the same time respect the separation of church and state and generally respect the rules of the democratic game. Parties, in short, which in many ways could resemble Christian democratic parties as they emerged in Western Europe in the 20th century and also to some degree uh, in Latin America in the 20th century. This discussion, as you probably know, has been going on for some time now, whether Christian democracy is a potential model for Muslim democracy in places like Turkey, but also in other parts of the world. And while there have been, while there have been a few proponents of this idea, by now there actually seems to be a larger chorus of people who are skeptical about the idea that Christian democracy should conscript or could somehow be a template or a model for something called Muslim democracy. Why? Well, essentially, I think there are, you might say, three and a half objections to why, actually, Christian democracy is not a guide or a model for Muslim democracy. I'll just mention them very briefly. First of all, there is the idea that people like the, uh, the leading politicians of, for instance, the AKP in Turkey, never actually talk about Muslim democracy. They themselves reject the term and much rather talk about something that they call conservative democracy. And rather than referring to any Islamic thinkers of any sort, they would much rather be associated with some of the classics of the Western canon of conservative political thought. They actually much rather quote Edmund Burke or Mike Lokeshott rather than more indigenous uh, thinkers. So that's one objection. Another objection, much more serious, much larger, is a claim that you're all familiar with, namely the idea that in and of itself, Islam and democracy are not compatible, that there is something about Islam in itself that somehow makes it difficult, if not impossible, to combine it with democratic government. Third objection, and this is much more specific, is the notion that what made Christian democracy possible in the West, in Europe in particular, was basically uh, the peculiar structures of the Catholic Church, namely the fact that there is a more or less centralized hierarchy, and ultimately, of course, the Vatican, that can basically issue binding decisions not just on faith, but to some degree also on politics. That, in other words, the, the development of Christian democracy in the West was to a significant degree led by the Vatican, that when the Pope essentially turned in favor of democracy, the faithful, the believers, had to follow, and that therefore Christian democracy, or a turn of Catholics in particular to democracy, could become much more binding across uh, Across, uh, across the, uh, the scale. These are the sort of three hardcore 
objections to the very idea of Christian democracy as a model of Muslim democracy. I said it's not just three objections, but three and a half objections. The half objection, I would say, is the claim that one also quite frequently hears nowadays, namely that it might well be possible that something like Muslim democracy eventually emerges in Turkey, in the Middle East, further afield, but that all of this actually has absolutely nothing to do with religious precepts or the precise content of the Quran or anything of that sort. Why? Because the argument says, this argument says, that basically as soon as parties really enter electoral competition, they almost automatically become more moderate. They want to attract as many voters as possible. Uh, once they're in government, they're completely consumed by fixing actual problems, uh, dealing with day-to-day -day politics and so on. So that basically there are all the incentives for becoming more moderate and worrying about what exactly the Quran might say about politics is really irrelevant because once sort of people start to compete democratically for votes, they're bound to be less extremist, more moderate, etc., etc. So these are sort of three and a half, or if you like, four arguments that have been very prominent in this debate. What I want to do tonight briefly um, is essentially dis 